But when we started doing pavement preservation, you, you know, accelerated testing is still extremely useful, but, but that doesn't tell us uh, all the things that we need to know at the DOT level to, to really implement and the full potential of pavement preservation. So beginning in 2012, we worked very closely with the pavement preservation industry, many of whom are, I see in the room uh, here today, uh, worked with us, kind of a technical working group was formed, and we ended up designing the experiment that we built on Lee Road 159. So that really is our low traffic pavement preservation experiment that's located very close to the NCAP pavement test track. And it's umbrellaed underneath the, our, our testing, research and testing activities. So we mobilize every week and we, we do uh, data collection on Lee Road 159 just like we do uh, on the test track on Mondays when we park our fleet of, of heavy, triple, tri heavy triple trailer trains. These sections on Lee Road 159 are, are uh, 100 feet long, they're two lanes wide. So we have unloaded trucks going in the northern lane and then loaded trucks, it's a dead end road to a quarry and an asphalt plant that are coming out in the southbound lane. And so we have a really nice diversity of pretreatment condition, a nice diversity of, of loading in these lanes and then we can then characterize uh, performance of, these, of all these different treatments on this half mile long road on, on a weekly basis. Well, beginning in the 2015 research cycle, in addition to the partnership with Minnesota DOT, we built high traffic pavement preservation sections out on US 280. So where 159 is about five minutes from the main NCAT office, which is, which is also near campus at Auburn University, the test sections on US 280 are about five minutes from the test track. So we've got low traffic preservation now and high traffic preservation. And I'm gonna provide you with an update, a, a hot off the presses update. Since I, I came in today, I drove up this morning because I was out inspecting test sections uh, yesterday on 159 and 280 after spending most of my summer with, with my friend Ben and our, and our partners at Minnesota DOT uh, building test sections up there for pavement preservation and also for, for mixed performance. So, so you'll hear us uh, talk a lot about the same type of research model in Minnesota that we have at NCAT. You know, we have, have accelerated testing that we do on the track with select preservation test sections, and then we have low traffic and high traffic off system test sections that we have umbrellaed underneath our research operations in a way that we treat them just, just as if they're on our, our test facilities, the low volume root, uh, loop or the, the interstate bypass mainline sections at, at Men Road. Well, they're not there because we need actual you know, low, low uh, traffic preservation, high traffic preservation with, with a, a nice diversity of traffic. So we umbrella them under our research operations even though they're, they're off our facilities. So we're really proud of the Men Road partnership and the relationship that we have with all the good people at, at Minnesota DOT. So I'm going to talk about, about all these things and at the end of my presentation, which I'm going to strive to keep at 30 minutes, Ben, out of respect to you. And uh, I'm going to hand off to him at the very end and he's going to pick up with uh, a discussion of, of what we've done at, uh, at Men Road this summer. So, so to start out with what we have uh, there at the NCAP pavement test track, the first sections are the accelerated sections that were built on the track in the previous research cycle. And uh, we had to use the same, the same thicknesses, uh, similar levels of distress on, on these pavements, nice diversity of condition, you know, good, uh, relatively low cracking in one, one wheel path generally and a little bit more cracking in the other wheel path. And that's kind of the magic of the approach, the key to, to the analysis of the data that's coming off of all the experiments is that we're not just looking at a single test section, we're breaking them down into subsections by wheel path and then cutting them up into small enough pieces where we individually measure roughness and texture and rutting and, and crack mapping that, that we have a, a great number of test sections where we're relating the, the life extending benefit of preservation back to pretreatment conditions. So the test sections that we have on the track to give you an update on where we are, after 4.9 million easels, we had to, to uh, remove some of these sections. We had to mill them and, and inlay them with plant mix in order to continue to support traffic with our fleet without damaging our trucks or, or risking uh, harm to our drivers. But 4.9 million easels is a lot of traffic on sections that were, that were around 20% of the total lane area cracked before we applied the chip seals and the microsurfaces and the thin lays and all the other things that we've done on on, on 159 and 280, so that, that was actually very good. The microsurface, most of the microsurface that we put on the track as part of our accelerator preservation is, is still in place, and we think it's gonna make it to the end of the research cycle. Right now, it's at about 6.8 million easels, 
That's a lot of traffic when we had quite a bit of, of pretreatment cracking, and you can kind of see that in this slide. This is kind of one of those uh, wet weather SSD condition pictures where you can see the cracking that is not normally visible when the, when the mat is dry. So there was a lot of cracking in this section in this case before we put the microsurface on, and it still is, is performing quite well where the, the chip seal and the scrub seal and the control section all had to be milled and, and inlaid. Likewise, the, the thin lay section still looks good. So the two sections that are, that are still in place are the microsurface and the thin lay on the track. And again, they're at about 6.8 million easels. So changing gears now, going out to 159, uh, these sections were placed in 2012. So they've, you know, they've been in place now for four years. And uh, this pavement was 14 years old at the time we, that we put these, these treatments down. So it was, it was pretty old. And we've got a couple of control sections out there that we're continuing to monitor that we didn't do anything to. And if you look at where we are and our traffic on these sections, the lightly loaded inbound lane where the trucks are running empty into the quarry and the asphalt plant has seen about 50,000 easels over the last four years. The outbound lane where the trucks loaded down has seen about 600,000 easels over the last four years. Um, we've got 25 sections, 23 of those have been treated, and we've got a lot of standalone test sections, a lot of combination test sections. And I'm gonna go through data for you now, and, and uh, Jim and Rod and our other friends out there, this data is hot off the presses. I, I, I finished doing a lot of the analysis this morning before I, I left to, to make the drive up, up to Nashville. And this includes data through, through June of this summer. So this is kind of a preview for those of you who are gonna be able to make it to the sponsor meeting that we're gonna be hosting at, at Men Road uh, here in, in just a couple of weeks because it'll involve some of, this, some of this same data. So if you look at the the chip seals in the low traffic sections on, on Lee Road 159 or, or County Road 159, what you see on this data is, is how much cracking do we have in place with the treatment compared to what we would have had had we not done anything to it. So when you get to 100%, then, then you're kind of back to the point where you've, you've, you've burnt up your life extending or your condition improving benefit on, on these test sections. Now the ultimate goal of the experiment is to take everything back to pretreatment condition, but that's taking a long time for us to do that because we had, you know, these are these are good high quality uh, pavement preservation treatments. So the the long term objective is quantify life extending and condition improving benefit, and we're doing that as subsections return fully to pretreatment condition. But in the meantime, the the short term product that the DOTs can can implement is the condition improving benefit that you see on, on these plots. So in the case of this plot, you've got uh, a chip seal that after about three years, in, in the case of this roadway, average condition for this test section, you've used up the condition improving benefit after about three years with a standalone chip seal. But if you go out there and you crack seal before you apply the chip seal, it, you've still got tons of, of condition improving benefit that's, that's left out there in place. So the separation between those curves is the, is the benefit that you get from crack sealing before the chip seal is, is applied. So there's lots of good, really useful data in this plot. And we've got chip seals and scrub, and scrub seals, fiber mat chip seals, and, and everything except for the standalone chip seal it, is really doing quite well uh, in, uh, on our uh, low traffic uh, test sections there on, on County Road 159. So if you look at microsurface, same kind of story, standalone microsurface uh, is after about three years, you're, you're at the same condition you would have been without it. And, I, and what I'm plotting here is cracking. And we're, we're doing our crack mapping out there. On, on the test track, we crawl around and we map cracking in a very detailed way. We don't do that on 159 or on 280 because th these are products that are gonna be implemented directly by state DOT, so we do it with video cameras. And uh, there's cracking out there that's, that's very, very low severity that you can't see with the cameras. And that kind of is our filter for what cracking are we counting and what cracking are we not counting. So if it's an active crack, if it's pumping, you know, if it's, if it's a pretty significant uh, severity level crack, we see it with our cameras. But if it's very tight, very low severity, we don't see it. So it does not get it uh, included in the, in the data here. So after three years, the microsurface section, uh, the cracking is back in place. but uh, look at the benefit of crack sealing before you put the microsurface down. We've still got a lot of condition improving benefit uh, out there in that section uh, as a result of the crack sealing. When I was out there yesterday, I, I took, I took a, a bunch of pictures and I, I tried to 
uh, say, well, what's the best investment of my time? And this was one of the pictures that I thought was a really good investment. It's probably a little washed out for y'all, but that, that uh, transverse white line that you see there is the break point between the standalone microsurface and the one that's closest to you as you look at this is the one that we crack sealed ahead of time. And you can kind of see the, the texture effect of that crack sealing that was done before the microsurface was applied. There's a significant difference in the cracking that you see in those sections. I mean, it really jumps out at you in that picture because the fatigue cracking in the outside wheel path in the, in the loaded outbound lane is, is really becoming very, very obvious, very apparent. The severity level is starting to creep up on us. We're at a key time after four years on 159, and some of these sections, I think, are going to start to deteriorate for us, and that's a good thing because that will allow us to fully quantify the life extending and condition improving benefit. But in the, in the section that's closest to you that was crack sealed ahead of time, you see some, some cracking in this section, for example, right here. Now, this, is a, this is a crack that has shown up, but, but for the most part, the cracking is sealed and, and uh, very, very slow growth in cracking in the one that was, that was sealed ahead of time. So the other big uh, group uh, that I'm going to show you data on from 159 are the thin lays. Uh, some interesting data in the thin lays as well. Uh, if, you, if you look at this, uh, the two thin lays that contain reclaimed and recycled material, we've got one of them that is 50% fine fractionated wrap, and the other one is 5% post-consumer shingles, processed shingles. So we've got pretty high binder replacement uh, in, in both these mixes with aged, with aged binders. And after four years, both of those are at about the 20% of the total lane area cracked level uh, compared to what would have been there had, had, had none of the, had those treatments not been applied. So we're starting to see some pretty significant uh, shifting in, in those two thin lays. The other thin lays are doing, are doing really well. The two thin lays that don't have any cracking at all in them are both combination treatments. One of them is a thin lay on top of a, a CCPR base layer where we milled out the, the existing structure and, and put a thin lay on top of it. And the other one uh, is a thin lay cape seal. So it's, it's the thin lay that was placed uh, directly on top of a fiber mat chip seal. And there's, there's no, absolutely no cracks in either one of those sections. There are some you know, very, very low severity cracks uh, in, in, in the other thin lays. And some, in some of the cases, just like a single crack in those sections. But, but there are those two that have none. Another thing I wanted to mention about 159, those of you who are familiar with it know that we had a water line bust in one of our test sections. Because we've got this subsection view of everything, we just blank out the data for the subsections that are impacted by that. But it's kind of been a maintenance headache for us. We've patched this, this pothole that had to be repaired because of the, the water line break four or five times. And uh, when I was actually in the Dakotas doing a presentation up there, uh, there was a vendor there that, that talked about the very successful nasty thermal crack repairs that they'd done in Minnesota. And as a demo, they came down and patched this pothole uh, for us here using a, a, a hot, uh, hot kettle mix. And uh, that was done, I think, four or five months ago. And there's not a single crack in that patch, even though there's cracking around the perimeter of it. So we we're very excited about that. And uh, Lee County was there for that demo. And I think they, they intend to do some business with the company that came down and demonstrated that, that technology. So to kind of give you my observations, this is based on the data that I showed you in these plots that, that I said, as I mentioned, goes through June of this summer. And then also my visual observations when I was out there inspecting test sections yesterday. I've, I've organized these uh, kind of categorically based on how much money you're going to spend out there to do them. So I'm starting with the, 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 you know, the least expensive treatments and going down to the, to the more expensive uh, treatments. Uh, regarding crack sealing, we continue to see that crack sealing significantly reduces the development of cracking when it's used as a standalone treatment or in combination with other treatments. In the chip seals, the, we see the least cracking in the scrub seal, the triple chip, and the fiber mat, and then you kind of go down in the double layer chip seal, there's, there's a little bit of cracking in that. And then the single layer chip seal has, has quite a bit of, of cracking now that is beginning to, uh, to show back up in it. In the microsurfaces, there's less cracking in the double layer and the one that is crack sealed. Uh, the best is in the combination cape, uh, cape treatments where we've got microsurfaces on top of chip seals. We're seeing some excellent performance uh, there uh, from those uh, combination treatments. The thin lays, as I mentioned, there are no cracks at all uh, in, the, in the, the, the thin lay cape and then also the one with the CCPR base. 
uh, and, and then we've got more cracking in the 50% fine fractionated wrap and the 5% post-consumer shingle mixes. And in the cape seals, we see the least cracking in the, in the scrub cape and the thin lay cape, then the fiber mat, and, and then the chip. So the one that has the most cracking back in it is, is again, you, you kind of see the relationship between the cost, the amount of money that you're investing, and the effort that you're investing, and the return of cracking in, in these test sections. So there's a lot of really nice information that's coming off of Lee Road 159. And if you're ever in the area, this is an open roadway, very low traffic, very high percentage trucks because of the quarry and the asphalt plant. So you can, anybody can get out and walk and, and there's signs on the side of the road that show you what you're looking at. So it's a great experience to see all those treatments in one location. Well, as I mentioned, last summer, 2015, we went out on US 280 thanks to the support from uh, Alabama Department of Transportation and we applied all the same treatments we'd done on 159 with an expanded set of, of treatments and treatment combinations based on, on what we had learned. Uh, and we put all those in the truck lane, the, the westbound truck lane on, on US 280, about five minutes from the test track. Since these have been installed, they've seen about 1.8 million vehicles, just under 2 million ve uh, vehicles, and they're approaching 600,000 easels. So we've got you know, quite a bit of traffic that these sections have seen over the course of the past year. Again, way less than the accelerated traffic on the track, but significantly more than the traffic that we see uh, on our on uh, low traffic County Road 159. So I drove down 280 and took a bunch of pictures from the shoulder uh, to kind of track everything out there uh, at in tenth of a mile increments or tenth of a mile test sections just in the one lane. So they're different layout than the track or 159 but you can roll down the shoulder and look at your odometer and kind of tell where you are uh, based on how all the treatments were laid out. This is one of the untreated sections and you can see the low severity cracking with just a little bit of pumping that you have out there. That's kind of representative of the sections that don't have any treatments at all applied to them. Last summer when we, when we applied all these surfaces, uh, the most recent uh, surface on 280 was about nine years old. So this is you know, you'll, you'll see in the untreated sections that these are actually in, in pretty good shape from a DOT point of view. Most of the cracking that you can see from the shoulder, you know, unless it's pumping, you, it's such low severity that you can't see it with, with automated uh, distress type uh, data collection. So it's really low severity, which makes it a good candidate for pavement preservation. And, and also we're separating the wheel pass and chopping it up into pieces. So we've got all the, the we got the subsection approach like we used on Lee Road 159. In the, the virgin thin lay section, which begins at mile marker 128.5, there's, there's no cracking in it, so we got good performance in this section. The double micro has, has some very low severity cracks, but no pumping, which tells you that there's, there's no action going on there. And, and the, you know, there's two types of pumping. There's pumping from bases and subgrades, and then there's pumping just because of movement, uh, shear movement within the mix and kind of aggregate grinding and a little dust that accumulates on the surface. We don't have any sections out there where there's like foundation type pumping. This is just active crack type pumping where you know you're getting some water down inside the, the pavement structure. So the double micro has cracking in it that you would never see with, a, with an automated distress device, but you do see it when you, when you ride down the shoulder. The crack seal section beginning at 128.7, there are no new cracks at all in it. Again, this was all done last summer, so it's almost exactly a, a year old. Uh, in the fiber micro section, uh, we, we have cracking and we have pumping, uh, but the location of this section is also quite challenging because you know, we've got some, uh, some truck turnouts and things, so, so you, know, you have to really focus on the, the subsection approach to the data analysis here. Uh, it makes for good pictures to show you what's happening out there, but uh, got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. There's no cracking in the, the highly polymer modified microsurface section. Again, that's a, that's a very uh, interesting finding. And we actually used the highly polymer modified mix to do some patching uh, from some utility damage that was done in one of our previous test sections. And, and the patching that we did turned out really, really nice. I don't know if Mark Ishii is here. Mark, are you here? Uh, the patches still look great out on, out on uh, US 280. Rejuvenating fog seals, we had a very, very similar shot rate, essentially the same shot rate for both of these. This is the joint between the rejuvenating and the non-rejuvenating. And you, you can see the kind of the boost you get from the rejuvenator. It's a little bit darker fog seal compared to the one that does not have it. And uh, both these sections are, are in really good shape, good quality uh, throughout. Uh, the chip seal with crack sealing, you can see, you know, this is a high traffic application and there's a little bit of flushing in, in, through the chips. 
uh, with the crack ceiling, but but there's no uh, no cracks. You can kind of view this as kind of healed cracks up through the up through the chip seal. There's no cracking and no pumping there. Uh, chip seal, we do have cracks in it. There's no pumping in this section, which means that it wouldn't map if you were uh, monitoring it with a machine. We have cracks, but no pumping in the microsurface at 129.7. We have cracks and pumping in a, in a scrub cape section, but again, this is in a location where there's some truck activity and uh, some logging, so it's in uh, primarily in the outside wheel path. You can also see, I like this picture because a lot of heavy braking, you know, somebody had to slam the brakes on, lock them up on a truck uh, on this road, and you know, this is a high traffic uh, application, 14, over 14,000 ADT in the four lanes. Uh, so, so we're not babying these surfaces, we're really, we're really giving them a workout out there. We have cracks and healing in the fiber mat chip seal, which I thought was quite interesting. And the fiber mat chip seal, there's actually a double emulsion shot with, with fibers that are applied. And we're seeing the same kind of healing in it that we see in the in the chip seal that was that was crack sealed uh, beforehand. So that that's kind of an interesting observation. In the triple chip seal, and, and we see this on 159. I didn't have pictures of it, but in the triple chip test section on 159, in the inbound lane where there's not where the trucks are unloaded, it looks pristine. In the outbound lane with the exact same number of axle passes, but the trucks are loaded. There's, there's some flushing in that section because of the, the extra weight on the axles. When we see, we see bleeding in the triple chip seal in, in the high traffic environment out on, out on uh, US 280. So, you know, if I'm an agency guy, my takeaway from that is I can get great performance, great service out of the triple chip. I just probably need to be careful about, about the, the level of truck traffic in the environment that I, that I install that in. We have likewise a little bit of flushing in the double chip seal, but, but not the, not the bleeding that we have in the, in, in the triple. We have OGFCs out there with different types of tack materials and different rates. There are no cracks in the OGFC or in the ultra thin bonded section that, that we have. So we're getting good performance uh, from all those, including the wet weather performance and the spray reduction that you would expect with, with the porous surface mixes. In the thin lay scrub cape, these are, these are the only cracks that we see in that section and we got a little bit of pumping in, in, the, in these cracks. Again, this was at a turnout location where we, we had some, some more aggressive cracking there beforehand. Otherwise, this section looks really good. Uh, this is a picture of, a, of just a, a standalone thin lay on the right and then we put a friction microsurface on it on, on the left. You know, what you don't get from these thin lays is macro texture. Well, so on one of these sections, we came back and we put macro texture on the thin lay uh, using, a, using a, a microsurface treatment. So that's why it's a, it's a combination and you see the enhanced friction numbers from that treatment. So they both look, uh, they both look really good. We've got 100% wrap, uh, essentially binder layers with one inch thin overlays on top of them. We've got central plant recycling and in-place recycling. With a, with a emulsified asphalt and with foamed uh, hot, hot liquid asphalt. So they got the thin overlays on, on top of them out there. All those look extremely good. There's no cracking, no distresses of any type on these sections. And, uh, and these, these were sections that, that frankly, there was some concern about how they would do with thin lays on top of them, you know, the, the cold, cold recycle sections, but they all look really good. And this is a picture of the cores that we cut from these sections. So after, after some months of traffic, these cores were cut actually last fall. You really can't distinguish between the emulsion and the foam or the in place in the central plant. They all kind of look about, uh, about the same. So really good quality there. I'm gonna finish up by pointing out that Google Maps, I don't know how often they fly different areas, but the new Google Map, you can actually see our test section. So these were done this, this year, earlier this year. And what's interesting about it, I, I picked kind of a representative spot here, so if you kind of walk down it with me, there's the fiber mat cape seal, so you can see the black microsurface surface. Then you've got the fiber mat chip seal with no flushing and no, no bleeding, really nice looking chip seal. You might think that that's, that that's a thin lay or a microsurface, well that's the triple chip seal, so you can act from space, you can see the bleeding that we have in the triple chip seal, uh, pretty, pretty obvious. You see the kind of the minor flushing that we have in the in the double chip. There's a double microsurface, and then there's a control section in between them, and then finally you get to the OGSC. Now, just like we've got a low cracking and a high cracking control on 159, we've got low cracking, high cracking, low rutting, high rutting, roughness texture. We've got low and high controls for everything, so it'll be really easy for us to go back and say, 
well, what do we have with the treatment compared to what we would have had without the treatment using all of the, all of the controls. So this summer, as I mentioned, I spent a, a big part of my summer with, with our friends up at, uh, at, at Menroad with Minnesota DOT. Uh, this is a picture of, of some thin lays that we put down. This, this is on uh, County Road 8. So it looks like we've got a county road in the U.S. route down at NCAT that's umbrellaed under our facility. We've got the same thing up at, at Men Road. Uh, so we uh, hard drives, produced the mix. East Alabama Paving traveled up there with us and, and placed these thin lays on County Road 8 in U.S. 169. That was a, that was a great experience. Here's a shot of... Uh, Emulsion treatment, this is a microsurface going down on County Road 8. Vance Brothers uh, placed all the emulsion treatments uh, for us there. They did an outstanding job. So we had the, the same placement contractors in Minnesota that we had in Alabama, which is a really, really unique experimental control because we had the same quality effort at, at both locations. That's quite, uh, quite challenging to do. One of the things that I'm, that I'm proud of is we experimented with a sampling and testing procedure for microsurface. That's one of the, the big concerns that state DOTs have is, well, how do we do our quality control testing? Because, you, you know, you have a ticket from the machine, but, but how, do you, you know, how do you take that to the bank? So what we did was we pulled shoot samples from our micropaver, and then I, I mixed them up on, off on the side of the road, blended them up to you know, keep them from segregating and quartered them. And then we did moisture testing and furnace testing with what came out of that. And we, we did, uh, then we could do gradations on the furnace samples. So we had a water content, an asphalt content, and, and a gradation that, that we could work with. And the results came out e extremely promising. We mixed up a laboratory calibration sample for that purpose, and we were within a half a percent on, on, the, on the residual asphalt content in, in the microsurface sample. So it's very, very uh, encouraging. Uh, and we, we did that on all the test sections that we placed up at, at Menroe. So now that kind of brings you up to speed with, with what we've done on, the, on the, uh, the southern portion of the experiment and then a few pictures from the, from the, northern, uh, the northern experiment, but I think Ben's going to come up next and, and fill you in with what we have going on at, at Menrode. Thank you all Thank very you much. Boss.